himself getting past by multiple cars, as I mentioned earlier on. So New off in a very precarious situation, but he often finds himself in these in these places. He doesn't qualify as well as he races. The up front, they are sp getting uh, with uh, Lee Aberdeen, Lee Aberdeen and Luca Verani, not very far apart at all here. But we just want to see how Halle Alistair Haight deals with Marcello Kessler coming around the old hairpin. best decision they've ever made, just not having done that under the safety car, really. Yeah, they're taking their pit stop strategies from Ferrari, mate, with something that's going on. In turn one, just too much gas on them, too much feet on the loud pedal, and approach he's dropped him all the way down at the order, but Philip Hammer is eight out in front by an 8.91 seconds. Michael is a wall there, sir. Um, and it definitely doesn't want to be hitting that earlier on as well. Difficult, the understeer is in the dirty air through that final corner because it's such a long corner and you get dragged off into the grass very easily. He'll have the slipstream down towards the chicane. Peterson was briefly alongside, but that slipstream has saved him and kept him in third. Yeah, Verani now lost a little bit of time to Aberdeen, about half a second. Peterson is. Pike's pushed more and far and up ahead. He's got out of line. It's now Pike could have a go at Werrell. Don't push him off. He's in the championship fight. Jack Werrell chasing down Carl Jacklin. Further down, Rob Williams and Chris Barnes. Station will run outside line now, though, for the heavy braking zone. Around the outside goes the Audi R8. And look Whoa. how much Miller's caught back into play. Exactly. Miller's just like trouble. He's touched on second and change. All of a sudden, Miller's back in play. to the back end of Phil Jocelyn. So there's been a lot of movers and shakers in this first two laps here for race two. Uh, absolutely serious racing league. Everybody's a lot of fun. Yeah. And it's all um, about the entertainment. So I hope everybody is enjoying themselves out there in the chat. We know that, that Ron is at the enjoying himself oh watching the Burger King machines off into the grass a little bit there as they're really bunching up now.
does he have it? He's on the outside line though, going into the fastest corner on the circuit. Surely this can't work. Dominic Ligner has got a sensational run outside line now though for the heavy braking zone. Around the outside goes the Audi R8. And look Whoa. how much Miller's caught back into play. Exactly, Miller's just like trouble. He's up on second and change. All of a sudden Miller's back in play. Can Barry do it? Big Barry's gonna do it! Big Barry! Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome along to the Sim Racing Collective F4 Sprint Season 2 here at Sebring International Raceway. My name's Alex Goldschmidt, alongside, well, I'm the colour commentator for tonight, but the man will be in the, the pound seat. Good evening, Tom Cairns. Why don't you take us through what's going to be happening tonight, sir? Yes, absolutely. So it's the second round of the TSR CF4 Sprint Championship at the Sebring International Raceway. So just running through how everything will work in terms of tonight. We've just done a practice session and the drivers have just been given the briefing. 15 minutes of quality is about to commence if he hasn't already done so. And we've got two races lined up. The first one being 15 minutes long, which is determined by the qualifying results. Uh, there'll be a five minute break for the drivers to grab a drink or nip to the day or whatever. And then we've got a 25 minute second race where the top 10 from the race one result gets reversed for the grid there is a pit stop involved as well so it should make for an interesting evening of action and i have to say this circuit does have a lot of history doesn't it alex uh, perhaps going back to the days when it made the odd appearance on the f1 calendar going back as far as the 1950s and yes, Miami is not the first Formula 1 circuit to be held in Florida because Sebring was in fact the first one involved. That's a little bit of a trick question in case you go to pubs a lot. Yes, or you get the motorsport round. Of course, uh, it occupies the site of the old uh, Hendrix Army Airfield that was a training base uh, in operation in the latter part of second, the Second World War between 1941 and 1946 also. Uh, hosts the iconic 12 hours of Sebring uh, endurance event that was first held back in March of 1952. Very flat, but very bumpy. Lots of tarmac surface mm. changes and will be catching the drivers out. I've already seen a few drivers in the uh, F4 Discord chat um, saying, well, this setup isn't really conducive to... Uh, turn one uh well they've got six, 17 of them to get through and we're four minutes into uh time qualifying already and there, there are some returnees there are some uh, newer faces that joined earlier on uh in this second season uh but yeah we're, we're we're just waiting for the first few laps to come in and kieran sharp goes in with a two minute 2.342 uh he was one of the uh so what what we'll do is um, we'll take you all through a little bit of a hot lap with uh, Kieran. He's just uh, on the run through into uh, turns three, four, and five, uh, and he spins it before Gurney Bend, and luckily enough holds onto the brakes for the first couple of cars that come past. I mean, that's one of multiple pinch points here, Tom, as uh, you and I both being uh, big time motorsport uh, fanatics. But I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll take you through a hot lap with uh, James O'Reilly. Um, who's uh, coming across the line now. So it's uh, it's hard on the accelerator. You know, these cars are going to be pushing about 140 miles an hour going through into turn one, which is a very deceptive and very bumpy left-hander. And then we've got the, uh, the complex here at turn two, which is turns two, three, and four. So be very wary of the curbs and not let them catch, catch you out. And then we go into uh, Gurney Bend here at turn six where uh late named after the uh, the icon that is mr dan gurney and then it's a, a run down to the hairpin here at turn seven uh, and this is quite deceptive this this top part of the circuit here tom because there's a lot of uh lateral sideways momentum changes aren't there yes absolutely and you have to see whilst you are aiming to nail the apex you have to really put the car in line for the very next corner which is only just around well, just as you turn in, really. So it's almost like a slalom, if you want to put it in those words, where you've just got to be 
you've got to sort of preempt your, uh, your turning point before you actually do it. So you have to be very, very clever in the sense of how you navigate your way through that particular part of the course, going through the Fangio chicane and then through Cunningham and then Collar. Uh, we've just gone through the tower turn as far as I know, and that's down the Flying Fortress Strait, which I think uh, dates back to the sort of days of, well, you know your history in terms of uh, maybe the military side of things, Alex. I'm not so much uh, knowledgeable about it. But either way, he's going through the uh, Gambinian Bend and the Le Mans Curve, and it should be the back straight of the Ulman Strait. And then we are should be coming towards uh, Sunset to conclude the lap. And that all uh, that is uh, James O'Reilly taking us round a lap of this Sebring International Raceway. Yeah, very, very bumpy through Sunset Bend. You can see the amount of... Uh, jarring that the car is actually suffering. Someone's already hit it into the barriers coming outside of Sunset Bend, so you might see two or three wide action. And uh, yeah, I mean, Jamie Nuttall is now quickest of anybody. Two minute two by uh, 0.246 in the crack racing number 14. He was one of the uh, protagonists at the sharper end of the field. Uh, David Santa Maria, one of two Andorian drivers that we do, uh, Andorian drivers that we actually have here. Uh, currently running P5 behind uh, Jack Southfield, who's fourth. Uh, Andrew Pike, uh, Yacheslav Vol uh, Volodoya from Estonia rounds out the top seven ahead of Josh Millington, Hayden Miller. Uh, and there is the uh, the weather, uh, 16 kilometer an hour wind, 83% uh, humidity. It is cloudy up above, 21 degrees air, 22 degrees track. Um, at Snetterton for the opening round, there was a lot of low lying mist. Uh, let's say. Uh, race one, um, I was talking about with Kieran Sharp uh, about last time out at Snetterton, and um, Guillaume Hamling ended up on the roll bar of the <laughs> the airbox. There was a, about six or seven cars squabbling, and um, one of the drivers, Guillaume Van Hoot from Belgium in the 25, got caught out by the sausage curb, and then back, uh, Bobby Moss, who is the uh, official general of the Nigel Mansell fan club, uh, He's not yet set a lap time. Uh, went went around. Guillaume Hamling went up and over onto his roof. Um, had a check of the footage from the from the stream last time out. Uh, Frank Porte Ruiz uh, just goes top. Oh, that's a good lap there, Tom. Ruiz has just gone top. Two minute one point nine one three. Um, there's still time for these drivers to find. I think though. You would think so with the track evolution um, evolving, and we've only got a minute and fifteen seconds. Uh, plus any spare time after, if there is any, uh, for these drivers to get their laps in. Now, given it's only a, a two-minute lap as well, they haven't got long to uh, get to grips uh, in terms of qualifying uh, in comparison to practice, because practice, as we all know, is different in terms of how the track can evolve, whereas with qualifying, everyone is on the track all at the same time. So you have to sort of go with the flow, and uh, you have to really attack every corner that's out there to get the best position on the grid as we watch uh, Christian Comprega coming down the the back straight it's the last back straight before the end of the it's the Ullman straight and he'll shortly be making his way through Sunset and where he, I don't know if he's on a lap for certain there we are not seeing a lap time uh, come up at the bottom so we'll just have to assume he is on a lap so we'll see how Comprega gets on in the nicely sort of neon colored machine if that's the right no so he'll be uh, beginning a lap he has now yet so eighth fastest he goes with a two minute 2.7 which is a very respectable lap time uh we've got thomas helmet coming through as well to complete a lap or so we thought no he, no he didn't get it in time unfortunately so that concludes the qualifying session that didn't last very long did it but we do have a result and we have a grid for race one mr gold trail Yeah, so good good to see uh, Sean O'Reilly in SOR Fitness. Uh, but there's the grid, Tom. Uh, take us through it, buddy. So, Frankie Potivarese on pole position ahead of Tom Davidson alongside. On the second row, we've got Jamie Nuttall and Jack Southfield. And on row three, we've got Aaron Full and Kieran Sharp. The fourth row is taken up by David Santa Maria and Christian Comprega. On the fifth row, we've got Josh Millington and Andrew Pike. On the sixth row of the grid is Virgilislav Voldova and James O'Reilly. 
and we look to the rest of the grid as uh, we've got Giggle Ome, Hamlin in 13th position ahead of the Hungarian Gödle Kumzabo. And on row eight is Hayden Miller and Quinton Van. On the ninth row of the grid is Ed Parfit along, com alongside his compatriot David Barnes. Uh, running up the top 20 are Simon Norton and Adam Burks. And we've got Grant Miller and Gareth Ronda. And on row 12, we've got uh, Oscar Ceriso and Guillaume Van Ute. And on the back row, the 13th and final row of the grid makes up of Bobby Moss and the Dane Thomas Helmer. Yeah, I think we're just waiting for James O'Reilly to grid up and then we'll have the completed 26 strong grid. Yeah, this is going to be a tough one. Um, but yeah, with Bobby Moss and Thomas Helmer not having any luck. But Tom, start this over to you, buddy. So the five lights are coming on now and we wait for the drivers to move from the lights. It's underway for the first race of the seat, evening in Sebring. And we look at Port of the Rings getting off to a blended start but we're looking at Davidson is looking to the outside as they come towards the left-hander of turn one it's a very wide entry into there but it'll close up as they come through there but Porter de Rees with the inside line retains the lead ahead of Tom Davidson in second place and in third we look at Jack Southfield has maintained his position at Jamie Knuckle and Aaron Foll we've got to Comprega Mitch dropping down the order and I'll let you have a look at that Alex because it looks like he's had a bit of a moment there as Porter de Rees heads out in front yeah, Camprega was straight off at turn number two. We've had another few other drivers. Quinton van den uh from the Netherlands. Adam Burks has been off the circuit. Porte Ruiz is holding off Davidson. Uh, but Southfield, Nuttall, full. We're going to have a look at the replay here. Now, this is coming through turn one. They're fanning out three, four wide at points. So this is Oscar Saristo, the uh, flying fin. Gets attacked from behind. Gets spun around through at turn three and that was i think possibly number 11 of no, that wasn't gogli kunsabo i tried to make out the number there uh but yeah oscar saristo from tsrc esports uh unable to have an opportunity we've also got camprega and adam burks both in the pit so they were fanning out you know nearly six wide through into the approach into turn one as james o'reilly goes up the inside of uh miller uh, hayden miller from phoenix racing and that's the battle for p11 but Otto Luis is uh, still holding on to the race lead. So, oh, two wide behind James O'Reilly. That's Hamlin. Hamlin's up the inside there of uh, Miller as he looks to, but Miller maintains the advantage as they come through uh, round the back end of the first lap. They go into the Ullman straight. Otto Luis retains the lead ahead of Tom Davidson as we look at Southfield is making a move on the Brits. And that looks like Southfield making a move on Davidson. And before the first lap is out, Southfield is up into second position. Yeah, uh, Porter Ruiz has just uh, did exactly what he needed to do. Davidson has got, oh, crikey, got so close to the wall coming out of sunset, out of turn number 17. Uh, but yeah, Porter Ruiz doing a really, really good job at the front end of the field. These laps are going to go past very, very quickly. We're nearly two and a half minutes in, and some of the drivers are only just making their way uh, down the back, uh, the start finish straight. Uh, we got side by side between Keir and Sharp. And uh, Andrew Pike, as Jamie Nuttall's gone on the offensive here. Aaron Full looking up the inside of the number 14 cracked racing machine. And Full has to back out of it. Nuttall takes fourth on that one, Tom. Yeah, he has done. And um, we're watching Nuttall and Full continuing to go into combat as they go round, as they come towards, I think this is coming towards the Fangio chicane. But there's a car going right round the inside there. Who is that coming through? That Josh Millington. My Godfather. He, he he did not have any hesitation on that one. That was splendid. I don't know how he managed to do that. Yeah, he came from so far back and he pulled off a brilliant overtake. But we're looking at Santa Maria. He fancies a go of it. Can he do three into one just like Millington did? Uh, I think he's only having to settle with uh, full for the time being. But yes, that was a fantastic overtake there from Josh Millington to go up into fourth place now as Santa Maria moves in front of Full as he goes to the right hander. But Millington spins and he takes a knuckle with him. Oh, dearie me. It was only going to come to blows. This circuit is so unforgiving. It's so tight and technical. And now this has made it a three way fight between, well, Jamie Nuttall's just been passed by Guillaume Hamling. Uh, the Luxembourger was on his roof at race one last time out at Snetterton. But Nuttall's still trying to thread the issue and he spins it around. Nuttall around again, and that was coming out again to Bean and heading into Le Mans. Yeah, and uh, I don't know where he's got a little bit carried away from the uh, battle he's had with Millington, but we're looking at Pike now. He's looking to uh, make it two birds in one stone uh, via the 
old cliche, but he was not able to do it. Gone too deep into the last corner of Sunset. As watch Kieran Sharp ride on board, he fancies a chance to get through ahead of Pike. And there's someone else that's made it through. This is like a drag race. And we've only done two laps of this. I know. It's just like IndyCar. Only no one's got pushed to pass here. Uh, that is James O'Reilly trying to go around the outside at turn number one. And he clashes with one of the TSRC cars. I've got a feeling there might have been Kieran Sharp that got compromised because um, Andrew Pike was sideways coming out of sunset. Uh, Volodya uh, holding on to sixth place. He's been closed in on by O'Reilly and Pike. And just up ahead, he's, he's got Santa Maria and full. Um, so, again, it was three wide coming out of sunset. I cannot believe what I'm seeing here. The top... The top three have just broken away. You've got Southfield leading, Davidson second, Porte Ruiz running out the top three as Aaron Full sends that up the inside uh, at, at, fan, uh, at the hairpin turn leading on to Fangio. Kieran Sharp and Hayden Miller are battling over 11th place like two petulant children over the last swing of the playground. But some great tete-a-tete -tete action here at Sebring here, Tom. Yeah, Sansa Maria fights him back on Aaron Full as he goes into the right-hander and that's enough for... Uh, for him to go back into fourth place, the driver in car number eight into fourth place. We want to try and get through. And just seeing that Southfield is now into the lead of the race. He's ahead of Porto de Riz. He's down to third place now. So we didn't quite spot that on the live broadcast. It'd be great if we could get a replay of. Yeah, if we get a replay of that, that would be uh, really good to see. But yes, we have a new race leader. That is Jack Southfield, who's through as Pike gets through on what looks like. Uh, is that Aaron Fuller who's got through there, or is that James O'Reilly? Can't quite tell from that angle. I think it might be behind him actually thinking a bit. But it might be he's in seventh place is Pike and he's chasing after James O'Reilly. There is Aaron Full who's in fifth place and he's looking to uh, get back ahead of Santa Marina for fourth, pl for fourth place as they come towards uh, Sunset. Uh, we haven't got long left in this race um, Alex and we've all seen, already seen so many tussles. Yep. Yeah, we're going to see a replay in the change for the race lead. Jack Southfield round the outside of Porte de Ruiz through turn number one. And oh, that's why Porte de Ruiz lost the lead because he just went all kind of crossed up. Got on the run out of turn one into turn two. Porte de Ruiz just got a bit of a tank slapper. And you can see now that everyone's scrambling behind to try and catch them up. Uh, Aaron Full ahead of James O'Reilly. Andrew Pike rounds out the top seven. Uh, Yacheslav Volodoya from Estonia rounds out the top eight with Guillaume Hamling and Wild Thing, Wild Things Racing's uh, Gurgli Kunsabo. Well, Volodoya has just dropped outside of the top ten. Pike's got through on O'Reilly for sixth place. We're on board with Porto Ruiz, and it's not that much between the top three. They've got a gap of about 4.3 seconds, but O'Reilly again trying to go into battle with Pike. Um, and then you look behind. Hamlin, Consabo, Kieran Sharp has got uh, Guillaume Van, Van Hoot uh, round the outside of him. Of all places at the Fangio chicane. Is he going to make the move stick? It's going to be close going into cutting the corner. And Van Hoot does make the move complete. Yeah, so it looks like James O'Reilly's got a lot of support from those who are watching. So, so he, we are looking at the top three between Southfield, Davidson and Port Ceres. This is going to go on right to the end of the race. I can almost guarantee that's going to be the case. It's just a matter of which one of these three is going to come out on top. Is it going to be Southfield? Is it going to be Davidson? Or is it going to be the pole sitter, uh, Paul Savarees, as they come onto the Ullman Straits? And I think Davidson, does he fancy having a go of it? Or is it too risky at this stage and maybe wait until in the latter stages of the water? He's a bit in, a, in that kind of a bit of a rock in a hard place kind of situation here Tom you know he's got to he's, he's got to think about when he can attack Southfield but then he's also got to watch out for Porte de Ruiz who had a, a better run coming through into Sunset Bend and had a tighter apex in comparison with the two in front and Porte de Ruiz right on the rear wing of Davidson as they come across the strike that's another lap in the books we're on to lap five now and Porte de Ruiz the new fastest lap he's looking to the outside at turn one has to back out of it um, and Southfield still holds on to the lead, but Porte Ruiz just trying to tee up a move around the outside through at turn one. They nearly interlock wheels between second and third place. Porte Ruiz round the outside. That's P2 in the bag for the Andorran. Brilliant. As, as sweet as she wants it. Porte Ruiz back ahead now of Tom Davidson into P2. The next try ahead of him is your race leader, Jack Southfield, but we're looking further back as we look at Hamlin, who's just inside the top ten at the moment. He's got uh, Voldoya and Van Hoops for company. 
and bump. <laughs> if you heard some bump drafting going on right now, as Valdoya fancies a go into the right hander of uh, what looks like Cunningham Corner, unless I'm mistaken. No, it's oh! Miller, Miller spun it, and Hamlin nearly went, ended up on his roof again. Hayden Miller spun it around instead of uh, in front of. Uh... Yeah, uh, Yacheslav Volodoya, and then Hamling had absolutely nowhere to go. He just got caught up as an unwilling participant in that one, Tom. Uh, it, 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 I did say that this this circuit, and I'm going to keep on repeating myself, I'm sure, over the course of the rest of the broadcast, that you make one mistake, uh, it just causes problems. We're on board with Edward Parfit, who's uh, battling away with uh, Quinted van uh, Wingarden from the Netherlands. Now, this is the battle over 14th. So, but we've got Santa Maria versus Full in the battle for fourth and fifth place. Um, and again, the leaders, I mean, Potiruiz is now sizing up a move on Southfield. Davidson's in the toe. Oh, don't try and make it three wide into sunset, please. And Davidson's going to try and get the cross over here, Tom. But, oh, he's oh, in and that's Southfield. Allow to reach through. Yeah. Southfield looking to get through as well. Southfield went, ran wide, and Davidson was able to take advantage of an open door, and that has allowed both Porto Reese and Davidson through to first and second places. But will it remain that way in the, the coming laps? Because we've got Porto Reese and Davidson now fighting it over the race lead. This is far from over. They've got Gareth Ronda in the in the yeah. That's Gareth Ronda in the 2:30 up ahead of them. He's kept it out of the way. Good work there by uh, Gareth, running in a very much uh, prima pat. Prima Power Team Racing livery. Riley and Kunsabo and Pike are squabbling over sixth, coming out into Gurdy Bend. There's Davidson looking at Portuguese once more, going into the uh, the right hander before the Fangio chicane. And Portuguese able to place the car in the right place. He's doing a very clever job, actually, Alex, in where he's positioning the car going into the corners to stop. Uh, Davidson or Southfield getting any form of advantage coming onto the straights. And look how he's placing the car there. He leaves him off room, and that allows Davidson to run wide a little bit. He's giving himself a little bit of a buffer for now, don't you think? Yeah, well, I mean, coming through into cutting the corner, Porto Ruiz just decided uh, to just keep it pinned on the outside, uh, pin, pin it on the inside, but they both uh, hit the hit the dirt, the brick dirt on the uh, left uh, left hand side coming out of Tower Turn, now through into Bishop Ben and into Genderbeam. And, you know, you've got to be very, very committed at this part of the circuit. And Davidson running a little bit wider than Southfield at the moment. So we're still riding on board on the, uh, the airbox cam. And then we now look back from the leader, Frank Porte Ruiz. And you can see the closing rate down the Almond Strait. And he pulls to the left-hand side. Davidson's getting a bit too close on the left. Southfield might fancy his opportunity. He swings to the inside, into Sa into Sunset Bend. They are three wide for the briefest of moments. Southfield's got the pair of them in a minute, but they're going to come towards the wall, coming out of the uh, onto the start finish straight. Southfield again uh, retakes the lead. Um, Guillaume Hamling at the moment. I have to give him a shout out. The Belgian started 24th and is now P10 at the moment. And it's going to be one and one more to go here, Tom. Two laps, including this one, and it's an absolute, it's an absolute dogfight at the front end of the field. No one's given the quarter. It's not. Uh, it, well, I was going to say not half because that was like a drag race down to turn two between the top three drivers. And Southfield has managed to get back the race lead again ahead of Porto Reese and Davidson School still going uh, side by side, heading towards uh, the the right hander before Fangio. And Potteries is able to hold on for now, but is his focus going to be on Davidson or is it going to be on Southfield? I think for now, I think in the Ford to have a look at Southfield, but they don't want to throw away any crucial points that could count towards the championship, Alex. 65 points for a race win, and I think it's 60 for second and so on, but these are big points nevertheless. Yeah, you've got to really, really sort of, in these sprint races, go hell for leather because you're not going to have to worry about a pit stop. The drivers will have to do so in the next race. Uh, Andrew Pike versus Guillaume Van Hoot. This is for seventh on the road. That's coming out of Cunningham Corner. Van Hoot holds the line and he spins around and Pike's in the wall. Yeah, and that's the end of Pike's race as we look at Van Hoot. Who is able to continue. Uh, it's very unfortunate there for Andrew Pike who got caught out he made contacts as they went through uh, Fangio and that 
was him paying the price, unfortunately. So he is out with over a lap to go. And I did say it was far from over. And it's very much far from over as far as the battle for the race win is concerned. As we watch uh, Porto Ruiz send one to the inside. But it needs to be careful because if they go in too deep, uh, Tom Davidson behind will take advantage of the open door. And he'll go into the lead as they go through sunset for the penultimate time in this race. Porto Ruiz takes the lead ahead of Southfield. As we look at Tom Davidson looking to get in on the act as well, take advantage and make a move up the inside, or is he going to go to the outside? As we begin the last lap now, X, this is it. Yeah, Porto Ruiz is, uh, was very, very lucky coming through Sunset Bend for the penultimate time. Through T1, Southfield runs a little bit wide. That's going to compromise him ever so slightly. But into turn two, Davidson nudges the rear wing of Porto Ruiz into turn two. My goodness me, this is like this is like the battle that will never end. Just keep them going for another five minutes, folks. We want at least another couple of laps out of this. But now Southfield back in the race lead. Portinari is down to second. Davidson still in the pound seat in third. Well, I will say, Alex, one job to look out for for mine is uh, David Santamaria because if the, any of these three get into a tangle, uh, Santa Maria will be there to pick up the pieces. But we are running out of time now in this first race. We have a clips the 15 minute mark this is the last lap of the race and Porto Ruiz still feels there is a race win in the offing for him but he can't afford to take too many risks now this could count towards the championship later oh. on and make contact and Davidson gets to on Porto Ruiz as a consequence that was going to be a case of uh, unstoppable force versus immovable object and Porto Ruiz found him on, uh, uh, was found to be receiving the short end of the stick on that one. But this is going to be the last chance. You know, they've come out of town a turn. You look behind. There is Santa Maria, who's, who's dropped the car onto the dusty stuff. Aaron Full has gotten through. And they're only 2.2 seconds behind this battle. But, yeah, this is the last run out of the... Uh, out through Genderbeen, through into Lamar, down the Almond straight for the final time. Southfield leading, Davidson in second. Could Porto Ruiz fire back at the last corner? Uh, it looks like Southfield may have this one in his pocket because I think Davidson's too far back to make a challenge on his rival. Uh, so there's a battle going up between Santa Maria and Full for fourth place. But we'll quickly go back to the leaders as they are about to complete their final lap of race one of the evening here in Sebring. Jack Southfield takes his first win of the season. He leads Tom Davidson and Porter Ruiz over the line. And he takes the first race win of tonight. It's a brilliant, brilliant battle. Thankfully, they kept it clean all the way through that 15 minutes plus event. And I think, like you say, Alex, I'm sure we wish another five minutes or so. But we've got a second race to come in all of that. As we run down on the rest of the results, David Santamaria is fourth ahead Aaron Full and James O'Reilly in sixth place. He'll be happy with that, I would have thought, with Kieran Sharp in P7. Yeah, Guillaume, yeah, uh, and James O'Reilly um, in the Peppa Pig livery. Uh, just keep on wondering when we're going to see George and the Dinosaur on the side pod. Uh, Guillaume Van Hoot, best driver of the night so far, up 16 places, finishes P8 with uh, Yachesav Volodoya and Guillaume Hamling uh, ran out the top 10. Hamling will be on the top 10 reverse grid pole position for race two. Uh, and then we had Jamie Nuttall, uh, Edward Parfit, uh, Quinton Van Van Gerden that have all come across the line. Millington, uh, Miller, Moss, uh, the Nigel Mensal fan club. Jack rounds out the top 16. Uh, there's Simon Norton in this uh, very, very nice uh, shell livery. Well, he's, 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 got, he's got a bit more than shell. He's got, mo he's got shell on one side, mobile one on the other. Uh, he's going to finish in 20th. We did have a few casualties. That was Andrew Pike. So he had a pit stop, was two minutes in the pit lane, lost uh, the, the three wheels on that wagon when he had that coming together with Guillaume Van Hout uh, a little bit earlier on. Um, but yeah, it's going to be Grant Miller and Simon Norton. We, we... Yeah, I think it was the uh, last corner that he, he crashed on. Gurgley Consabo, Gareth Ronda, David Barnes, Christian Cambrega, uh, Adam Burks and Oscar Stadisto uh, were, well, the last few were the ones that uh, unfortunately ended up calling their race a little bit early especially Berks and Sarista Sarista was turned around at turn two on the opening lap so yeah a little bit of attrition but some great racing at the front so a rundown on the race one results then as we saw a cracking race all the way through that one and uh, we're just waiting for the results to appear on our screen if we get them at any time. So here we go. Look, so Jack Sipfield runs out 
the race ahead of Tom Davidson. It's Frank Porteries in third, had David Santa Maria holding off Aaron Fold to the end. James O'Reilly was P6, had a Kieran shot in Guillaume van Hoot with uh, Fergislav Voldoya and Guilherme Hamlin rounding out the top 10. Jamie Knuckle, race winner of both races last week, only managing P11, head of Ed Parfit and Quinton van I'm just trying to find uh, his surname there. Do apologies for that. Uh, Vin, Vin Van, Gerd, Vin Gerd, there, yeah, yeah, Vin Gerd and my apologies. Yeah. Uh, Josh Millington, 14th, head of Hayden Miller and Bobby Moss. Thomas Helmer, Helmer was 17th, head of Grant Miller, who rounded out the uh, or one of the finishes. Well, Gurdley uh, Kansabo uh, was 19th, head of Simon Norton. When they got Andrew Pike, uh, Gareth Ron, Ronda, David Barnes, Christian Comprega, Oscar Ceriso, and Adam Burks did not make it to the end of that one. So, looking at the uh, the top ten results of that one, um, Alex, you'll have to rejug. Okay, yeah. so whilst we're waiting on the grid for race two, we've got the championship standings with Jamie Knuckle remaining in the lead despite coming home in P11 in race one. Oh, is it before this one? My apologies. Uh, so Kieran Sharp in P2 ahead of uh, Tom Davidson third, Aaron Full in fourth, and Ron uh, Vivardi Rombots, who's not in for this evening, is in fifth place. But Frank Potter-Ruiz's sixth place will have elevated him up the championship after that particular one. So we've got a few minutes um, break, Alex, before the second race. How do you assess that first race, though? Is that a sign of things to come for race two, do you reckon? It is a sign of what's going to be for race two here, Tom. Um, I think we, we are going to have a very, very close battle. But then, of course, the strategy of, um, you know, the, the fuel tanks are limited on these cars. So we, we were told before the broadcast that they are going to have to serve a pit stop. Uh, it's going to depend on whether some of the drivers might decide to fuel a little bit lighter um, in terms of the, you know, it's like a Formula One race where you can have your, you know, you, you, you can have that opportunity um, to undercut or overcut. Um, and... I think that's going to be the, the most dynamic factor that we're going to have to take into consideration uh, for this second race. I will, I, I, I'll be completely honest, Tom. I am expecting some people to fuel light and then go in early. But then, of course, when we didn't have many laps completed uh, after 15, which is what, eight? Uh, no, yeah, probably eight laps completed in that previous race. Um, yeah, you, you've just got to really sort of cross the t's dot the i's keep your nose clean in the first few you know first couple of laps and then just if you are down at the back end of the order then you're just going to have to watch what you're going to do yeah. uh Guillaume hamlin will be on reverse grid pole for the second race so he'll hope to uh, take advantage of that and maybe get a podium out of it well we are going to say that race one does determine uh, the grid, except the top 10 get reversed. So Hamlin will be on reverse grip all ahead of Valdoya, ahead of Van Oots, who was arguably the driver of the race, actually, because he came through from the back to get to eighth position. Uh, he's got a few supporters as well, Alex. Uh, some of them uh, cheering him on as well, saying go, go, Van Oots, according to uh, Sasha Van Weyenberg. Uh, and also, and uh, he got another, I think he made up about 14 positions or something like that in that first race, which is pretty astonishing. Yeah, I think, it, uh, well, he could have been as high as sixth in the order had there not been the incident involving him and Andrew Pike, who ended up having three wheels on the wagon because the right front suspension and uh, wheel were literally flapping about in the breeze. So Van Hoot could have been actually sixth. So by being eighth, it puts him on the inside of row number two, which gives him an opportunity. We've got some shout-outs here for James O'Reilly from Sean, saying James for a, for a podium. Um, you know, James O'Reilly was also in the top five, you know, a brief, for brief flashes during that first race. So, yeah, we're coming to the end of the warm-up. But, yeah, it's going to be interesting with uh, Hamlin and uh, Volodya on the front row. Uh, but then... We, we've got to watch out for some of the other drivers as well. You know, it's been a difficult one for Kieran Sharp in that opening race. You know, he's in the top five with, well, he's in uh, the top part of the leaderboard. He's second on 117 points before this round. And then you've got Tom Davidson, who was absolutely mighty in that one. But yeah, 
Um, but yeah, Tom, take us through the grid as we're getting set and ready for our second race of the night. So Galome Hamlin on reverse grid pole ahead of the Estonian Vladislav Volodoya. And it's uh, Galome Van Hoots in third place ahead of Kieran Sharp. Uh, James O'Reilly fifth ahead of Aaron Fold. And it's David Santamaria alongside Frank Potteries on the fourth row of the grid. Tom Davidson and Jack Southfield, who won race one, rounding out the top ten on the grid. On row six, we've got Jamie Knuckle, who's the champ who was the championship leader coming into uh, tonight's races, is 11th ahead of Ed Parfit in 12th. In 13th position, we've got Quinton Van Vingerden ahead of Josh Millington. Hayden Miller and Bobby Moss make up row eight, followed by Thomas Helmer and Grant Miller. Uh, Gurgley Gonzabo and Simon Norton are flag, on row flag. 10, have Andrew Pike and Gareth Ronda. And the lights out on the way we go for the second race of this evening. And it looks like Volodoya has got the jump on Hamlin at the start. But will it remain that way into the first turn? Right round the outside there goes the number seven of Volodya ahead of Van Hoots. has made his way through into second place. So Hamlin from reverse group hole not getting off to a good start. And they all make their way through turn two now. It's Volodya ahead of Kieran Sharp who's in second place ahead of Van Hoots. Hamlin fourth and it's full. Porto Reese is ahead of Southfield and Santa Maria. And Davidson, who's not got up to a good start, is in 10th place, but a long way to go in this one, Alex. It looks like Volodja is pulling clear of the rest. Yeah, that's about a six-tenth of a second advantage that uh, Volodja, the Estonian, has got. But who's setting it up the inside? That's Porto Ruiz, making it four wide, and they all scramble for traction. It's almost like micro-machines, isn't it? We're going through that uh, right-hander before Fangio. Yeah, uh, so they are heading towards now. Uh, the next breaking zone of the circuit as they come towards what looks like the tower turn or Cunningham corner, which one of the two, and they are refusing to leave each other alone. And there's contact! I can't quite tell who is. Santa is that Santa Maria? Santa Maria. Santa Maria. Yeah, that was a big, big hit. Santa Maria's lost the left, the right rear on that car. Big time. That was a big old hit. That was the same point when we saw Pike and... Uh, Van Hoot actually come together as well, coming out of Collier Curve and heading into Tower Turn. But yeah, uh, I mean, it's it just goes to show as Riley's just had Nussel send it up the inside, going through out of Gendebe Ben and heading into Lamar. They've got Davidson right behind them. Ed Parfit has just turned around and it scores panic. Oh yeah. dear, Millington involved in that one. Who else? Uh, I think Hayden Miller involved. Um, yeah, and Ed Parfit has got no rear wing at the moment. Yeah, Millington nearly went over as well as he caught the bump on the grass. That's the, oh, and there's, that's, is that O'Reilly spinning around? It is! Oh. And he just collected somebody else who's just gone hard into the barriers. So it's O'Reilly's... Burnt. It's oh. burnt. So we're looking at the uh, the leaders now. Volodya retaining the lead out of Kieran Sharp and Gov Lerne Van Hoot in third. And Jack Southfield from... Hemp on the grid has made his way up into fourth place, Alex. He's had a tremendous first lap. We've got we've got uh, Pike, Miller, Millington, Parfit, O'Reilly, Miller, Full and Santa Maria all in the pits. So we've got 18 cars out of the 26. That's eight drivers we've lost within the first lap and a half that have ended up in pit lane. But Kieran Sharp is being tested by Guillaume Van Hoot from Belgium round the outside of the hairpin turn before the Fangio chicane. Jack Southfield senses an opportunity that he might get through for third. And Southfield fancies a go on Van Hoots as they head towards the right-hander of Cunningham. And they all look to get through there on scave. Hopefully no contact this time. On the kerb goes Southfield on the inside there of the red and black livery number 25 of Gilome Van Hoots. And that's enough to move him up to the podium positions. Watch out for Porto Marines though. He fancies a go at it as well. Riding the curves, which will lose him some of the momentum, and he has to back out of it and just tuck into the toe of Van Hoot ahead. Yeah, Porto Ruiz is, uh, uh, is also an IRL driver, so I think he's racing in uh, single seaters in the FFSA Championship this year. Um, te uh, what was it? Tickles does sim racing, saying, I missed Quali. Did Bobby fluff it? Uh, yes, Bobby did muck it up because he didn't get to lap time in qualifying. It was only one of two drivers. Uh, that included uh, NLK Racing's uh, Thomas Helmer, who's in 18th position. But yeah, I think Porte Ruiz is just co being completely throwing caution to the wind. Here's the uh, Fernando Alonso 2005 tribute band, Thomas Helmer, uh, off the circuit, and ahead of him has gone Andrew Pike. And I think oh, that's the big son! 
that that's, was that, the... that's Santa Maria, isn't it? Yes. Oh, so yes. with the replay of the Santa Maria full accident on that one. Yeah, well, Aaron Full actually gets a touch and is airborne, and it was Santa Maria that was trying to go through on him. And Santa Maria has lost the rear wing, lost the rear wheel. Oh, dearie, dearie me, that was a big old hit. We're riding aboard with you, Guillaume Hamling, who got a bit crossed up there. Um, yeah, he's he got, dropped up. Yeah, he's got out of shape and he's dropped back to uh, eighth position. I just want to apologise because I got uh, carried away by the replay there because I actually thought it was live for a moment. But, uh, but yeah, it was. Well, it, we're back to what we are live. Yeah. We're back to live pitches anyway. As uh, Vologia retaining the lead had a Kieran Sharp. It's all hotting up uh, in the fight for the win, most certainly. Uh, we've got a new fast up of the race as well, Alex. Yeah, Jamie, Jamie Nuttall, 2 minute 2.112, as uh, he really is uh, to be a bit feisty. He's right behind Porto Ruiz, but battle for second here. Southfield and Sharp nearly come together. That was a bit, bit close there, going through out of uh, Cunningham Corner and into uh, Collier um, on the run down to, to Tower Turn. And, yeah, uh, Guillaume Van Hoot is just in the pants, just waiting to see if something's going to kick off in front. Well, Guillaume's been doing the right thing. He's been in the right place at the right time all night long and has made up so many places that I think uh, everyone can't discount the fact that he's been the, the driver of the night so far. Porto Ruiz chasing after Jamie Knuckle, the championship leader coming into tonight as they fight over fifth place, but they've got also Van Hoot and Sharp up ahead. There's a long way to go. They're on to the Ullman straight now, so we expect to see some action coming towards the end of this particular straight as Knuckle looks to defend uh, Port... Is that... No, no, he's making a move, actually, on Van Hoot into Sunset, and he's up the inside, is Knuckle, and that's a splendid overtake, and Van Hoot gets out of shape, and he nearly collects uh, Forte Ruiz with him. Yeah, and Davidson got through as a direct result. It was um, Van Hoot went completely Sebring sideways, and that is going to be a change for the lead. Possibly Southfield and Volodya get through out of turn one. They've got Sharp and Nuttall. Uh, it's just getting a bit too close to Perstal through into turn two and into Gurdy Bend. You then got Davidson. You then got Poitiers. You then got Van Hout. You've got seven cars. With six and three quarter minutes of this 25 minute race completed here, Tom, that are in clear contention for the win. Uh, and then there's a big old gap back to Wild Things Racing's uh, Gurgly Kunsabo in night. So that's eight drivers as it's going to be. Oh, Jamie Nuttall. That's ridiculous. I'm sorry. Right through the hairpin. He's gone round the outside of Kieran Sharp. He's going wheel to wheel through into the Fangio chicane and into the run into Cunningham Corner. This could be nearly three wide. It is nearly three wide into Cunningham. And Nuttall's gone for it. Nuttall went for it around the outside. He's just ahead of Volodoya through Collier Curve. Jamie Nuttall got two for the price of the one. He got the bog off special right there and then. He uh, kept his foot in there and he got the move done as Southfield pulls away from the rest of the pack now. Is it a conclusive uh, thing now, given that Southfield, the race one winner, is ahead of his pack? Should he be feeling comfortable at the moment as we watch the battle for second place rage on? And I think if you're Southfield, you'll wish, yeah, keep on battling and I'll continue pulling away from you all. It is like a little squabble in the playground all over again, like we had in uh, in race one as they come out of Lamar and down the Almond Strait on board with Frank Potteriz, the, uh, the pole sitter. He started... We finished P3 in the pre well, started uh, eighth in this race. He's up two spots. He's looking to the outside of Davidson. Might get, might get the crisscross here through into the sunset. As uh, someone has gone very, very wide. That's Volodoya. Uh, who? Oh, that's a big old. Oi! That was close to the wall. Volodoya was so close to all. Puerto Ruiz and Van Houten and Hamling have decided to pit. So, I did say, I did say before we went for this one Tom that there were going to be a couple of drivers that decided well you know what I'm gonna go a little bit earlier into the pit lane and uh, that has been proven by Van Houten Hamling. How will new tyres affect things for those who are stopping now is that going to give them an advantage of completing an undercut on this particular racetrack? I think it's more the case it's going to be fuel. Fuel is going to be the biggest thing because as I said the 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 tanks are limited, so that's what you've got to really take into consideration. They may have been running on fumes, and they're going to put enough fuel, plus a little bit extra, just to have that reserve. Um, whereas everyone else is going to start battling away as we're on board with Tom Davidson, who's not that far away. He's less than three tenths behind 
uh, Kieran Sharp, but we're going to catch a couple of replays here. So this is James O'Reilly versus Jamie Nuttall. Now this is into Sunset Bend, and this is when O'Reilly lost it halfway through the corner, and he just literally spanks the right-hand side of the wall with the right-hand side of the car. And then we got another one here. This is Grant Miller going through into Sunset as well. I did say the undulation here catch drivers out and he and he he's collected by the uh severely damaged um james o'reilly and then ed parfit with no rear wing on the back of it and he just spins it by tagging the front wall on the inside of sunset so and, the, and this is going to be aaron full we're going to be back on board with he's dropped the aerokinetics car has dropped all the way down to the bottom end of the field and he's just pulled off to the right inside and he's done a return to garage so uh that cost him a little bit of time in the in the pit lane but yeah this is the battle for uh 10th place and that is simon norton versus gogli kunsabo with the hungarian now through uh by whisker i might add we haven't spoken enough about uh Kunsabo in this race have we but as we watch uh, porter is come into the pits at the end of what looks like lap five as we look at knuckle sharp and what looks like yeah tom davidson in the battle for yeah, so yeah, fastest up also from Tom Davidson. He's able to get the power down as he chases after Sharp and Knuckle on the sixth lap of this second race of this evening. Uh, Jack Southfield's gap over the others is one and a half seconds. He can breathe a little easy, but not too much at this moment in time. No, you, you, with this circuit, as I said, with the varying changes in, in surface uh, and also the undulation, especially as now they're coming through. Uh, the hairpin turn before the Fangio chicane on the run to Cunningham Corner. Um, it is about just measuring things quite nicely. But Nuttall is actually getting on with the business at hand. Tom Davidson, you fast lap of the race. Uh, two minute, 1.951. They are actually catching the race leader now. Nuttall, Sharp and Davidson have opted for that work together kind of strategy. Of course, yes, Nuttall's with Crack Racing. Sharp and Davidson are part of TSRC Esports. So all of them will have thought, right, OK, let's just uh, get on with the business at hand. Jamie Nuttall was sideways coming out of tower turn then in the number 14, but still manages to keep the gap at about 1.2 seconds as they go through into Genderbean and then into Lamar. So Southfield isn't out of the woods quite yet. Frank Poitieres was uh, in uh, on the markers for about four and a half seconds. And it's currently P13. So um, the interesting thing here, Tom, is that the top 12, rounded out by Dave Barnes, have yet to pit. Yeah, so Pottery is the highest of all those that has pit is in 13th place. And, and he's he's got clear track ahead of him, actually, Alex. So he'll make use of that to his advantage. As we watch, as we watch uh, uh, Bobby Moss in the Nigel Mansi liveried Williams if I remember correctly, is up into sixth place on track ahead of Van, Van Gerden as Ken, uh, Christian Krimprig and uh, uh, the, yes. Bobby Moss <laughs> trying to fend off uh, the uh, uh, Quinson Van Van Gerden into turn one. And oh, he's round. Oh, oh, Van Van Gerden. Oh, dearie me. And we've had, we've had somebody else go off. That was... Well, we've had Van Gerwen, and that was, I think that was Christian Camprega that was off the circuit. He literally spun the back end around. So, yeah, it looks like, yeah, we're going to have a look at a replay here. This is Thomas Helmer in the Fernando Alonso tribute band, even though the uh, Spaniard has now signed a multi-year deal with Aston Martin and Ramco F1. Oh, that's not where you want to spin it. Oopsie daisy. And the Dane goes around and he's in the pits. Uh, Oscar Saristo also coming. Now, this is through Sunset Bend. Just keep your eyes opposite lock, spins it around, and is he going to tag the barriers? I think he might have just glanced it. Yeah. Yeah, it was the come. It was the bump that uh, caught Sarista out. But this is the incident involving Comprega and Van Van Gerden, and just Comprega was an innocent bystander in all of that, and he had nowhere to go there. And I wonder, oh. given how Van Van Gerden reversed back into the path of him whether he may take some form of punishment for that. How do you see it, Alex? Um, it, it is a bit of a 50-50. When you look at it from that perspective, uh, Van Van Gerden was still going backwards. Uh, but here goes Kieran Sharp up the inside. This is down the arm and straight on uh, Tom Davidson for P3. 
at Kieran Sharp using the side drift, a side draft coming through into Sunset Bend down the Almond Strait. The the thing is, is that Van Van Gerden was still going backwards because there was still that that impact that happened, um, and it, it just goes to show that sometimes if you're coming through at a big rate of speed like uh, Camp Rake was, you, the first thing you're you're not going to notice at that point may be the fact that there's a car backwards as there's uh, Van Wingerden. So we're going to have a look at this again. So he's battling with Bobby Moss. They interlock wheels ever so briefly. Van Wingerden spins around at turn one. And look, there's no time. For, for, there's literally, it was, that's a slow-mo of what would have happened in real time. And Camprega was unsighted, completely unsighted. It was nobody's fault on that one. So if we can see if we yeah uh, i mean i'd like to see it it's just to show the people at home what it looks like at real speed because you know they're coming into this corner at about 140 miles an hour this is at full speed okay van den gerden spins okay there's camprega camprega's got no time to react bang there you go there's the impact i think that's a 50 50 that could be more than likely class to racing incident on that one I mean, my initial thoughts was that the way Van Van Gerden reversed into the path of Camprega, I thought that might have been avoidable, you know, Alex, but we'll leave that for the stewards to look into later on. I, I mean, well, we, we are going to wait to see if we can get a, a replay on board with Christian Camprega. Uh, as we see, Jamie Nuttall battling away with Jack Southfield. Now, that gap was 1.5 seconds at one point. It's now less than two tenths. Out of Lamar... Uh, they go, and Nuttall was, um, I mean, Quinton Van Leeuwen, uh, Quinton Van Vingerden has just apologised in the F4 chat to Bobby Moss and also to Christian Camprega. He said, terribly, terribly sorry, I completely lost it. So Van Vingerden in that instance has accepted the fact that it, he was the person at fault. I think he just might have carried a bit too much speed. Now the top three have just come into the pit lane. Yeah, Southfield, so, Nuttall and Shub all coming in. The last lap before the one they've just pitted in for, Knuckle had posted a new fast lap of the race to 2 minute 1.8. Uh, Tom Davidson takes over the race lead for now. Uh, Veloggia, Moss, uh, Conzabo also in. So Porto Ruiz will go up into second place. So Porto, yeah, Porto Ruiz could jump them. Well, Southfield, Nutton and Sharp and Volodoya are on pit exit, but Porto Ruiz is at full racing speed, and this could be very, very difficult in terms of uh, the three that have just come out of pit lane. They'll be on colder tyres. Porto Ruiz now up to P5. Davidson is yet to pit. Gogli Consalvo has just come out of the pit lane. So now this is the opportunity for Porto Ruiz to uh, effectively close what is a 2.6 second gap back down to Kieran Sharp. He's a further second behind Jamie Nuttall. So effectively when Davidson pits, Southfield once again becomes the de facto race leader. But he's between a rock and a hard place at the moment because Jamie Nuttall's right on his case. Nuttall remaining in the slipstream of Southfield as they come on soup. We've just gone through uh, Fangio, and now this is Cunningham that they are about to head to. Now, is Nuttall going to go for it on Southfield, or is he going to wait further on in the lap? Probably the Ullman straight is his best chance. James O'Reilly and Thomas Helmer are battling away through into turn one. This might be for 17th position, but uh, James gets through. And Josh Millington and Andrew Pike are battling away uh, through into Cunningham corner. Millington trying to look around the outside and get the inside line for Collier corner might get the run through into tower turn I think Pike's just going to edge ahead for the minute Wellington's still trying to keep it pinned around the outside that's going to be brave going down flying fortress straight Millington is still there Davidson now pits Davidson now pits from the race lead so Nuttall is going to possibly yeah Nuttall has got through on Southfield on the approach into at Sunset Bend here, Tom, and we've still got uh, just shy of about six minutes to go. So uh, we're going to be very, very minimal on laps. I probably would say it's going to be three and a push, but Nuttall 
Uh, to the outside at turn one, Southfield up the inside, retakes the lead through T1. Davidson is going to come out behind Kieran Sharp and Nuttall still trying to hold on to that race lead as they go up to turn two. This is great stuff at the front end of the field. And those behind will be praying that they continue buckling so that they can get in on the at as the laps and time continue to tick down. Nuttall into the slipstream once again behind Jack Southfield as they head towards the right hander that is coming up now. And they very nearly touched wheels there, did Southfield and Nuttall. Very, very lucky indeed, but they were both able to give each other enough racing room as they're going to head through the Fangio chicane. This is going to allow uh, Kieran Sharp to close. Is the fact that he's got Frank Porteroiz right behind him. They are two and a half tenths of a second apart, but Nuttall still trying to put the frightness onto Southfield. There's Porteroiz, there's Davidson. That's the battle for P4. And if Porto Ruiz can get past Davidson, he's got less than five minutes to try and close up on those in front. But Nussel and Southfield, are it's like a, it's like a bare-knuckle boxing match. No one is giving anything at all. Both of them are on the limit. They are, and they're giving each other respect as well, Alex. They've been fighting all the way through in this race. And Nussel feels that a third victory of the campaign is up for grabs for him. It, he just needs to be very clever as to when he decides to go for it. If he goes for a last gasp overtake, that's going to allow Kieran Sharp and Tom Davidson to close in. So he needs to play this one very, very cleverly as he looks to the outside heading into Sunset. But it looks like Southfield has that one covered for now as they look to begin what we believe is going to be the penultimate lap of the race, Alex, as they cross over the line. But we'll look at Potts Ruiz and Davidson. And oh, hearing me, that is so, so close. That's the battle for P4. So we will have, I think, two laps, as you rightly said there, Tom, to go. Porto de Ruiz trying to go high, wide and handsome around the outside of Davidson in turn one. That's not going to work unless Porto de Ruiz has got enough momentum carry. He has. He, oh, he launched it. He just kept it pinned, kept the throttle lit fully. And Porto de Ruiz ran the outside at turn one on Tom Davidson. That's a belter. That was probably the overtake of the race so far. I mean, some may argue that there's been better overtakes throughout this one, but that one was right up there. Brilliant overtake there from Frank Porteries to put himself up into fourth place behind Kieran Sharp, Jimmy Knuckle and Jack Southfield. Uh, we are expected to receive a replay on that overtake from Porteries because it was absolutely splendid. It is worth another look as he looks to the outside into the first turn, kept it pinned, as you rightly mentioned, Alex, and that was a phenomenal overtake put himself up into the top four brilliant start yeah the thing was davidson had really got compromised because he was nigh on squeezed but there was still enough room from pote de Ruiz, uh, to make the move stick but i think tom davidson did the right thing there we're still uh we're pretty much at the point where we're going to be a third of the way through the uh, six round championship with motorsport arena oscherschleben next week on april 19th and this is what you can see from uh, Jamie Nuttall's perspective. The visor on the on the driver's race helmet, absolutely filthy at the moment. Uh, it's been cloudy all the way through the, 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 the two races so far, but Nuttall is just giving Southfield an absolute heart attack at the moment. Down the Almond Strait, and Nuttall might try for the crisscross uh, attempt here at Sunset Bend. If he carries the momentum through, get a tighter apex through, he's going to try and do it, but Southfield is around the outside of him through Sunset Bend. Two laps to go. Nuttall and Southfield can't be separated here, Tom. This is absolutely awesome racing. Great respect by the two of them. There was contact between Southfield and Knuckles as they went through turn one. The race winner of tonight against the race winner of both races last week. That is ja uh, Jamie Knuckle. Jack Southfield, the race winner of tonight, making it two from two. This could very much lock horns in terms of the championship battle after this race. But in the meantime, we are focusing on who's going to come out on top between uh, Southfield and Knuckle as they begin the last lap. This will be the last lap as they look to close out this race with a fine battle. How does Knuckle decide to play this one, Alex? Because this is vital now. Incredibly, incredibly crucial what Jamie Nuttle does now. Let's look at it from this perspective. Season one was the learning experience for everyone for the Sim Racing Collective. But now, 
You've got uh, Nuttall and Southfield absolutely knocking down each other's doors with sledgehammers like Triple H from the WWE. But it, it's really coming down to this this last moment, the last attempt that Jamie Nuttall is going to have. In, it, you know, you know what might happen coming out of Tower Turn. Oh, Southfield got a bit sideways there. Down through Tower Turn into Flying Fortress Strait. I think Nuttall's best opportunity is to be right on the rear wing coming out of Lamar as they are going to be very shortly and get the run down the Almond straight into Sunset Bend. This is the last chance. Last chance indeed. Knuckle right into the slipstream. stream. He needs to be right up the gearbox of Southfield's car and to ideally be on the outside depending on how the corner plays out. I think they'll want to be on the outside but these, you can see Southfield cutting across there, weaving across the straight. And that might be something for later on. But look at Southfield looking, to, uh, Knuckle looking to the outside of Southfield as they go toe to toe for one last time. But I think Southfield is about to do enough to make it two from two in Sebring in the TSRC. What a brilliant performance by Southfield. Excellent drive once again from 10th on the grid to the race win. Jamie Knuckle having to settle for second place as Southfield, as you can imagine, performing donuts to celebrate what has been a hard works evening. He's certainly earned his ways tonight, hasn't he? He definitely has. He definitely has. Jack Southfield winning by 72 thousandths of a second. I mean, he, and just for good measure, he just knocks off his front wing, going straight on at turn two, and someone that loses uh, a few wheels off of their wagon as well in the process. But yeah, I mean, I, I was, I, I wasn't at all surprised when Sebring came up on the calendar for this one. But um, we're, we're going to have a look back at the uh, Christian Camprega incident, I think, very shortly, because uh, he's going to finish down in uh, 20th position. Was, that was quite early on in the race. But, I mean, yeah, Southfield and Nuttall, it was going to be... Who was going to... Well, we're not going to get that replay, folks, but we're, we're waiting for the last couple of finishes. But there were great battles up and down the order. Um... Sean O'Reilly saying, ask James why he does so. <laughs> oh, dearie, dearie me, the O'Reilly family. I've got the daggers out at the moment in chat. Uh, ask James why he does so well in the first rate the race, then bins it in the second. Laugh out loud. Uh, Sasha van Veenberg uh, saying, all for Guillaume van Hoot, who uh, did start P3. Oh, dearie, dearie me, Helmer. Uh, nearly post-race comes through and uh, smacks into O'Reilly who was busy uh, doing some donuts of his own at turn one. And there's a lot of smoke coming out from that corner. But yeah, uh, TSRC F4, um, you know, I commentated on the entirety of the first season, Tom, and to really see it come into a second season and to see even better racing has just been uh, brilliant, especially in a track lot as iconic as this here at Sebring. Absolutely so. And, you know, we've seen plenty of overtaking all around the circuit. We've seen some... Drag races in particular parts of the racetrack we couldn't have imagined. So it's no wonder that this championship is very much taken by a storm. And Southfield was able to master round this racetrack. Two wins from two to round up a brilliant evening's action. We're going to run down the results of the second race then. Jack Southfield, as I've already mentioned, making it two wins from two. You had a Jamie Knuckle in second place, better than what he did in race one. Kieran Sharp, third. Frank Potteries in fourth place had a Tom Davidson. They said Fergislav Vologia in sixth had a Guillaume Hamlin, uh, Hamlin had a Guillaume Van Hoot. Uh, Jelly Consabo in ninth and rounding up the top ten was the Brit Josh Millington. Bobby Moss was 11, followed by Simon Norton. There's Adam Burks, James O'Reilly, Gareth Ronda, Dave, uh, David Santa Maria, who was at the back after tangling with Aaron, uh, with Aaron for earlier on. And we've got uh, Thomas Helmer. Quinton van Vingarden and Grant Miller. And I'm sure we had one more finisher in that race. Uh, that was Dave Barnes, as far as I can remember. He was a lap down anyway. Uh, Chris Kamprega, Ed Parfit, Andrew Pike, Ossia Ceristo, Hayden Miller, and Aaron Full. That was the name I was trying to get into my head. He was the one who tangled with David Santa Maria in the opening stages of race two. It is interview time, Alex. I'll let you take it away and speak to some of the drivers on what's been a compelling and enthralling uh, race or races, I should say. Yeah, we, yeah. Thanks, Tom. We are waiting for hopefully a couple of drivers to jump into the interview chat, but you are going to see some uh, replays from the race. We will give it a couple of minutes or so. Uh, so um, you know what? 
So this is uh, from Jack Southfield's uh, perspective. We have actually got someone waiting in the uh, in the interview room, but the, so Jack Southfield actually got a little bit of a, a touch in the number 98 going through into turn one but I think um, we have got one driver actually waiting to speak to <laughs> waiting to be interviewed in the interview room and it is Andrew Pike lol he's just said so let's bring let's bring Andrew in it's not been an easy easy run for him tonight Andrew Pike good evening good evening how are you doing not too bad um it hasn't been the best week, uh, best race evening for you in F4 on TSRC, let's be completely honest, because C brings a tough track to master, isn't it? Very much so, and uh, I didn't do any practice, because that's the kind of kind of guy I am sometimes. Um, but it was going alright until there was um, a contact in the first one, which put me in the fence, and then that puts you back in the danger zone in, in the second one, which is kind of what happened. I found myself amongst a, a gaggle of cars that collided and picked up some more damage, but that's how it goes. It's good fun. Yeah, I mean, you were having a really good battle with, uh, I think it was the incident through Collier Corner with, uh, I think it was Guillaume Van Hoot. You guys were battling uh, battling like two little children over sixth place. And, yeah, yeah. And the, the, the contact then literally flung you into the wall on the right-hand side before Tara turned, and then we saw... You had three wheels on the wagon because the right front was an absolute mess, and uh, it, it it can it, it is such a demanding circuit. You know, there's no real room to breathe, is there? No, that's true. And also, the cars are really uh, unforgiving when you're close. So, in any other like closed wheel series, that that would have been fine. I, I left uh, I left Van Hoot probably two car widths, but um, mm -hmm. it, 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 the slightest contact and you, and you get walked out into the fence. Uh, the one you're seeing there on the stream in the second race was, was my own fault. I was trying to follow Josh and misread the, uh, the the lack of downforce when you're that close to the back of somebody. But, uh, these new 3D curbs that they've been kind enough to uh, add to the game have uh, got rid of me. Yeah. Uh, I've got, uh, then we've also got the one we've just seen on the stream with regards to you. Yeah, uh, it's being, unfortunate. Uh, yeah, that was, I think that was between Gareth Ronda and Thomas Helmer, and you were right in the pound seat, and then all of a sudden... Yeah. Camperidge goes for the inside, and, and Ronda's sort of got nowhere to go, is he? Um, and, yeah. and I don't see that until until I hit it, essentially. So it's just one of those things. Yeah, it's like... Good, Good fun. You, you and you and Thomas both went uh, night rider ski mode on that particular occasion. Absolutely. Um, but Oshersleben next week, um, a different track, uh, one of the more rudimentary rudimentary ones that we see with regards to uh, F4. Uh, how do you fancy your chances? Because obviously you've, you, you've not had, like like I said, we, we saw you at the sharper end in, in season one. Currently, before coming into this round, you, you didn't have any points on the board, but you've got some uh, for this time around, even though with the, the, the finishes. Um, how, how do you fancy your chances at Oshersleben next week? Um, depends if, uh, depends how hard Sharpie works the weather so that we get um, rain. Uh, it's, I've got, I've definitely got the handle of the car, um, but it, yeah, it's a question of how many laps I'm actually getting and, and how everybody else fares as well. Um, the, the weather will be random, but you know, everybody's ribbing Sharpie because we still haven't seen any rain yet. Um, but there's only so much that can be done with regard to that. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see what it does. But uh, I mean, like I say, I've got the hang of the car to an extent. I can normally get it around in some sort of respectable spot, but if I don't, then I'll provide people with some decent crashes to watch at least. Indeed. Well, Andrew, thank you so much for joining us, buddy. Um, yeah, a bit of a shame, perhaps, but we're, we're looking forward to seeing how you get on next week for round three at Motorsport Arena at Osher but thanks for dropping by, buddy. Yeah, no worries at all. Thanks a lot, guys. Cheers. So... There we go, Andrew Pike. Um, well, Tom, I think from my perspective, uh, an action-packed evening of TSR F4 Sprint Racing. Um, I'm going to leave it to you to close out the show tonight because it's been a pleasure being alongside you in the commentary box. And it was a wonderful welcoming for me as well, um, Alex. You know, the TSRC living up to its name, living up to the action we have seen. Um, over 20 drivers on circuit backing it out for glory. And the fun doesn't stop there as the championship resumes in Oshersleben in seven days' time and look to do all of it again then. Thank you to Alex Goldsmith for being alongside me in the country position. I'm Tom Cairns, and we'll speak to you again soon when the TSRC 
returns.